billionaire investor Wilbur Ross joins us from Los Angeles live this morning to give us his reaction to the U.S. downgrade and a huge market sell-off. Mr. Ross, what a pleasure to have you on with us. Uh, first off, it's indiscriminate selling. We have panic and fear on the markets. Uh, what do you make of the market action itself? Well, I think you described it accurately. Markets really are a struggle between greed and fear. And right now, fear is very much the dominant phenomenon. So what we're seeing is numbers transformed into emotions and then emotions being transformed back into numbers. So it's kind is of a self-perpetuating problem. That's right. Is this all about emotion? I, I because right getting... now we don't... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think it is by emotion. If you take between yesterday and what looks like today, you're probably down 10, 12, 15 percent in most markets. Has the world really gotten 10, 12, 15 percent worse in the last 48 hours? I don't think so. I think all that's changed is a little bit the perception of the world, not so much the reality. Yeah, the way we're seeing trade on the markets, it looks like the world might be ending according to the investor view. But in these times of selling, do you think we'll finally hit a bottom, say, in the next few sessions or so? Well, you never know you've had the bottom until after you're past it. So our approach has been to look at our portfolio companies and the ones that are available for trading because the windows are open and all that. We bought some on Friday. We bought some more today. We'll probably buy some more when New York opens again tomorrow. So we've been pecking away uh, at things as they decline. That's right, Mr. Ross. You've made a, a name in buying up distressed assets. But maybe you can explain to our viewers why you're so confident that markets will rebound. Well, first of all, I don't think the world is coming to an end. And if it does, the least of my problems will be what my portfolio has in it. So <laughs> I, my beginning premise, our beginning premise is that this is not the end of everything. If you start with that premise, then you have to also say, what time denomination are you looking at? We look at things over a several-year time period, not a one-day trading range, not a one-week, not a one-month. I think if you look out over the next several years, there's plenty that's attractive, and even more particularly, plenty that's attractive in the emerging markets. Some of the emerging markets had been struggling even earlier this year. Yeah. Tell me, where are you buying? What kind of emerging markets are you looking at? Well, for us, the main emerging markets have been China, number one, and to a somewhat lesser degree, India. We also are reasonably active in Japan, although obviously that's a very developed market, not an emerging market. So those are three that we've been looking at very much. Lately, we also made a very big commitment to the Bank of Ireland in the Irish market because we think Ireland has been totally misclassified with the so-called Club Med countries because Ireland doesn't need structural reform. It just needs to repay the debt it incurred with its banking uh -huh. crisis. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Ireland and Europe because uh, we're talking about policy yesterday coming from the ECB, finally stepping into the markets and buying up Italian and Spanish bonds. But uh, guess what? That didn't really relieve the markets. And some are saying, well, why didn't you do this earlier? Well, think about it. Uh, Italy is the third largest issuer in the world of sovereign debt after the United States and Japan. The ECB only has 10 billion euros of capital. How can 10 billion euros of capital overwhelm the third largest sovereign debt market in the world? I think what Italy needs is not market propping. It desperately needs structural reform. It needs to make itself a real functioning economy. And no mm -hmm. amount of open market purchasing is going to accomplish that. Wilbur, I, I got to say, it's looking pretty scary out there when day after day we're seeing 4% declines across the board. Talk to us, uh, talk us through the markets right now. 
Well, things always look the worst before they turn. And I think what we're probably seeing today is partly just emotion and partly margin calls. With the severe declines that a number of stocks have had, I would guess that there have been quite a few margin calls being put out, and there will probably be more again today. So you're getting a combination of fearful selling and enforced involuntary selling. And that's what's probably contributing a lot to this problem. Yeah, with all the concerns, I mean, fear, panic on the markets, uh, can you tell us whether or not we're going to see markets higher at the end of this year? Well, I'm, I'm not very good on short-term things, but I do think that buying good stocks at today's prices over a couple-year time period will prove mm -hmm. to be a uniquely rewarding experience. Whether it turns around in three months or six months, that, that's too hard to tell. But frankly, I don't think it's the point. Anybody who tries to figure out the exact bottom to buy and the exact top to sell is a moron because you really can't do that. It's, it's impossible to fine tune things to that degree. So I think all you can do is say, are there real values here? Are we probably closer to the bottom than to the top? And if so, gradually start increasing your commitments. Okay, well, it looks like investors are pleading at the central bank, the reserve bank, to do something, maybe QE3 or some sort of stimulus. Uh, what are you expecting after this monetary policy for the Fed? Well, I, I've been a believer for some time that if the economy stays as weak as I feel it is, and if the markets start to show the kind of behavior they're now doing, at some point, I believe that there's a good probability Federal Reserve will institute some form of QE3. Because remember, the Fed only has two obligations. One is to try to minimize unemployment. The other is to try to contain inflation within some limits. With the price of oil coming down and with the uh, economy slowing a bit, and unemployment high, it's hard to imagine too much inflation problem. So I think they will focus on the other side of the equation, which is trying to stimulate the economy. Okay. Are you surprised by this reaction in the markets after the S&P downgrade? Because didn't a lot of folks, a lot of investors out there, saying that this was already priced in? Well, it, if you look at the different markets, they've reacted very differently. You had a retreat to safety, which people are defining as some combination of U.S. Treasuries and gold, even though those are pretty unlikely bedfellows to be together. On the other hand, riskier assets, very low quality junk bonds, the single B bonds, acted worse than stocks did yesterday. And it wouldn't surprise me if they did again today. So there's a real risk aversion going on. And that usually means you're getting near to the point of capitulation. And yeah. once you have capitulation on the part of investors, then things can get back to more normal. Yeah, some say the Monday session was absolute capitulation, Wilbur. So what are you doing with your U.S. holding? You say you're pecking. Are you pecking in U.S. markets as well? Yes, we are. And the reason we're just pecking is what I said before. You can never be sure where really is the bottom, where really is the turning point. So we've been just gradually committing some funds. We have, well, okay. other than Wilbur, the Bank of Ireland. Can you Ireland, be a little more specific? And, I have to ask yes. you specifically for the U.S. market. What, what are you picking up right now? Well, the most recent thing that we announced was we went into the marine transport of uh, petroleum and petroleum products. We backed a very experienced management about a week ago in buying uh, some 30-odd vessels, uh, many of which had very good long-term charters, because we believe that that industry has been severely depressed by the combination of too many ships having been ordered a few years ago and then the slowdown in consumption of hydrocarbons. So that was mm -hmm. one very clear instance. A second one is shale gas. We're big backers 
of a company called Exco, which is listed on the New York Exchange. We think that shale gas has to be a big part of America's energy future because okay. gas is far less polluted and far cheaper than coal. All right, Wilbur, so it looks like you're still betting on the energy space. Uh, I'm running out of time, but I wanted to get your thoughts also in China because we're expecting a big economic release today in the country. It looks like inflation is a make or break really for markets across this region. What do you think of the Chinese economy right now? We've had naysayers saying we're heading for a crash. Your thoughts? I, I don't believe there'll be a property crash of great consequence in China for three basic reasons. First of all, there is fundamentally a severe shortage of housing. Second of all, load to value ratios are only in the 60 to 75 percent range. They never got into the lunacy of the West. And third, you have the tradition of families helping their offspring. So the grandparents are now helping their adult children if they have trouble making the mortgage payments. And with those three ingredients, while the market will cool down, maybe even go down some, it's not going to collapse the way that the U.S. markets did. So we're not that worried about property. What we are worried about is food costs, because China being a very low per capita income country, particularly in the rural regions, food costs are an extremely high percentage of the budget, and therefore those are the things that really have to get under control. And so that, to us, will be the real test. Okay, but overall, you are buoyant on China. Is that right? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, you have to be uh, b buoyant on China. Chinese government has managed its affairs much better than any of the other, any of the developed countries, that, to my eye. So I think you okay. have to have a great deal of respect for them. All right. Wilbur, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Uh, it's great to see you, as always. Wilbur Ross, billionaire investor of WLB Ross, joining us from Los Angeles. Now, there's more to